All right, I wanted to show you guys something really cool. You've seen this washer motor in a previous video it was taken apart, and you got to see all the coils and magnets inside. This is the same system back onto the washer shaft. I just cut the tub so we can see both sides. And out of the three phases of power off that motor, I've only got two hooked up to just do a light bulb. And uh, the interesting thing I wanted to show is that just with, I mean, like, not even 90 degrees of movement of this, I can make that bulb turn on. And I'm talking, like, that much movement. That's all I'm going to do. Just watch the bulb. And with that much movement, you see the light come on? That was just a little shot. It's pretty impressive. Not hard to turn. This is going to make the perfect windmill. Because on this shaft, you can either make a horizontal windmill, where it's like this, and then you would build uh, either a rain barrel cut in half, those five gallon rain barrels or whatever, uh, to make a, a horizontal windmill that turns like this, or a plate like this with regular windmill blades coming out with lots of torque to them. Because this doesn't have to spin fast at all in order to charge batteries, and right now it's giving off an alternating current. But with a simple uh, bridge rectifier, we can have DC power coming out instead and be charging batteries with this system. So this is going to turn into something pretty cool. This is the basket from it. There's the other spline that will fit on this shaft. And as you can see in the bottom of the barrel, if I just cut that circle that's there with all those notches, if I just cut in between those notches, I'll be left with a perfect circle with the shaft in the middle, and I can attach any windmill or anything to that. So... This has got me pretty excited. Whirlpool Cabrio, Maytag uh, Bravo, or Kenmore Oasis. Those are all the same machine that have this motor inside of it. And like I said, this is going to make the perfect windmill. If I make one whole rotation, it could probably burn the bulb out. Close. Anyway, we'll have a lot more videos on this thing. I just wanted to show this thing hooked up and uh, I was very excited to see this is going to be a very useful generator for a windmill. All right, one other thing I wanted to show that I'm in the middle of working on is ways of making generators so we can get some power for our hydroxy machines. And uh, as you can see, I'm messing around with the hard drives. i got tons of them. And I've got tons and tons of different magnets. I've got different wheels and little experiments I'm working on here. I've also got a hard drive with circular rare earth magnets epoxied right to it. And uh, I'm going to be putting some small coils on there and seeing what kind of power I can get out of here. I know I need a metal backing first, but uh, this is just coming along slowly. Just wanted to show some of the different things I'm working on. And that's it. You'll see some experiments and some results very shortly. Okay, one other thing I wanted to show is the cells are starting to foam a bit now. You can see the double diamond cells, about half the tube of foam, but that clears up pretty fast. The 1 8 gap cell is just thick, thick, thick foam, man. It's like 90% foam. So, I am seeing a difference between the, um, the 1 8 gaps and the 1 16th gaps. Um, the 1 16th gaps seem to cause a lot more foaming. As you can see, the other ones are starting to clear up a little bit right now. Let's see. This one's still pretty good at foaming though. So the plate gap looks like it does make a difference so far, but I'm going to let these run for another couple of weeks and see how much uh, difference we actually do get between them.